Hi, Achim here, Inner Space Explorers. Today it's not about the deep water project. Today we talk about something else, as you've seen in the title, advantages and disadvantages of um, chest-mounted rebreathers. Obviously inspired a little bit by the fact that I'm diving the go at the moment a lot and that caused quite some discussions. And uh, so from the, the from the feedback I was getting and from the questions that were coming in, that's actually a good topic. Before I uh, start with this, first of all, if you like the content, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. And also, if you haven't seen the shorts that I posted yesterday or the day before, I can't remember, uh, when I hit the 30,000 subscribers, I'll do a live and I'll do a giveaway uh, with books, diving books. Um, and uh, so if you're interested in that, just watch out. I will uh, actually announce that. So there will be a couple of hours like pre-announcement. So you can join if you want to, um, to all the ones that I um, announced in the shorts already that are books that I uh, have uh, multiple times. I'll obviously put some of my book uh, in there, like a couple of copies. And um, yeah, so if you're interested in that, just have a look for that. Um, all right. Chest mounted rebreathers, advantages, disadvantages. So first of all, for me, chest mounted rebreather always was oxygen rebreather. So if you follow me for a while, you know that I'm very much into oxygen rebreathers, that I have several of them, that I built several, and that's something that I really like to do because it's the most simple form of rebreather diving, if not even the most simple form of diving, except uh, skin diving. And it really gives you the chance to, to become a fish underwater, so to speak. I mean, no bubbles, no noise, no nothing, no solenoid clicking, no... I mean, as I said, it's basically a bag that you're breathing in and out and you just add a little bit of oxygen. And I really like that. It gives you a very natural feeling. And the way you approach nature, fish, other creatures underwater, is just amazing because they usually do not... Uh, look at you like an intruder. So um, the lake that I'm diving a lot, um, there's quite a few places where nobody's diving because you can access these areas. So I'm going there with a kayak usually. And that's actually then what led me to uh, using the oxygen rebreather because it was, a, it was a very small, very lightweight unit that I can easily put on the kayak. And it's way less of drama than putting a tank on there with a BCD, etc. And um, so when you go there and you yeah, you meet fish that probably never saw a diver before, like big pikes, for example, that are very common in this lake. You can approach them like almost touching distance without any issues. Try that with scuba gear. That usually doesn't work. Um, and so, but I never looked at this as like a real rebreather. I never thought about how could you extend that potentially uh, to become... Um, a full-blown CCR rebreather. And then, I mean, it started. There was the Triton, um, there's the Diefright Optima, now the Go, and so there's more and more of these uh, chest-mounted rebreather units. So, let's talk about the advantages. Sorry. Um, obviously, the size. So, most of them are significantly smaller than back-mounted units. Um, doesn't matter. I mean, you always have to find a reasonable comparison. But uh, if you look at, look at the, the, let's say, common re back mounted rebreathers at the moment, like the JJ, for example, um, the Inspiration, the Hollis Prism, just to name a few. I mean, it doesn't matter. It's not. A, it's not about the brand or anything. And you look about look at the size of these rebreathers, and then you take. Um, the uh, Optima, which is, in my opinion, one of the bigger ones from the chest mounted ones, it's still a lot smaller. So, of course, the reason for that is because there's no tanks attached normally. I mean, some of them have the oxygen tank attached, but generally speaking, you don't have the two, 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 two liter or three liter tanks like you have on a back mounted unit. So that means you have to put these tanks somewhere. And with a lot of these units, you have your doubles or your single tank on the back, which act as still wind. And that's already the first disadvantage because you become a lot bigger. So suddenly you have the height of the tanks, whatever it is, on, on your back, plus you have something in the front. 
And when I saw the first uh, chest-mounted full CCRs, and I think the first one I ever saw was the was the Optima, I was like, hmm, I don't know if I like that. That makes you very big. Uh, now, especially thinking cave diving, thinking wreck diving, uh, penetration diving in wrecks, then I considered that a disadvantage. Sorry, I basically didn't sleep last night. Um, so that changed a little bit when I started diving the go, uh, because I started diving the go in caves in Florida. And uh, even in, I mean, I wouldn't call it a restriction, but even in tighter spaces, like for example, let's uh, stick with a popular one, the, the lips in, uh, in Genie Springs and Devils, uh, which a lot of people know. Uh, if you don't know it, you can just Google it. Uh, the lips, uh, Devil's Eye, Devil's Ear, Genie Springs Park, um, just to give you an idea. And I realized that's not a problem at all. I could easily fit through there. Uh, actually, scooter, uh, double 80s, and go, and it was still not a problem. And the reason is that unless you really squeeze through something super tight, where you like scrap with your front, on the floor, um, just by having your arms out there, and I mean talking horizontally, you still, I mean, there's still 20, 30 centimeters that you normally have in front of you. And that's basically the space that the rebreather then takes. So I, in all honesty, I could not feel a disadvantage of that. So yeah, you get bigger. So if you go into real small stuff, that could be an issue but it's not as much of a disadvantage as, as I initially thought. And before the screaming starts, this is not an advertisement video for the go. I'm talking about chest mounted rebreathers. That's why I'm mentioning the, the Symbios as another one, the Optima, the Triton, whatever it is, right? So it's a general thing. I mean, just my personal experience is basically the go. That's why I keep coming back on the go because that's why I can say something about it. But size-wise, it's super, super small but it's not like the others are like that much bigger. I mean, it's just a very small compact unit, but I mean, the extension or the, the thickness that it adds to your chest is not a big difference compared to other units. Um, the other thing is, and I mean, yeah, coming back to that, if you wanna reduce this, you can always dive it in a side mount configuration. So you eliminate um, the gear on your back, right? So suddenly you have your side mount tanks plus this one, it's easy. So I, I did that as well. And then actually you become quite thin, actually thinner than if you have doubles on your back. And it's a bit easier con to control. So when you think about the classic DR principle, where you say the, the front's clean, right? Uh, and the thinking is I can control that. I can see it, I have visual control. So I can really like squeeze through something and I can touch it or basically go as close as possible with my front because I know it's clean. Um, you can look at it the, the opposite way. So now I know my back's clean and I have visual control about the stuff that is basically prone to entanglement. So if I go through a wreck or a cave and I know this is the stuff in front that is basically could get entangled somewhere, now I have visual control. So probably it's the exact opposite of the other one, but actually not a bad, not a bad thing. So if I get entangled in a line or in a cable or whatever on my front, I can see it. Probably way easier to fix it instead of waving my body like, hey, I'm entangled somewhere in the back and I can reach it. So can you, or I can feel it, whatever. Can you fix it? So that might even be an advantage depending on where you dive, what you do, how you configure it. But it's just an interesting thought in my opinion. The other thing is that breathing. Um, generally speaking, if you're in a horizontal position, a chest mounted rebreather always offers better breathing resistance. And um, so for those of you who are not rebreather divers, always think about it like that. If you're, let's say you're standing in the water, which we don't want to do. So now you have your lungs at a certain height and you have your counter lungs on a certain height on your back. So if you're standing, the pressure in these two lungs is the same. So breathing should be fairly easy. So if you go in a horizontal position, suddenly there's more pressure on the counter lung than on your lung, on, 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 on your internal lungs. So um, obviously inhaling is easy because the pressure is kind of um, pushing, pushing it, right? So the, the 
um, the counter lung has more pressure than your lungs. So if you inhale, the pressure is actually supporting your inhalation. That's what I wanted to say. So when you turn around, it's the opposite. Like exhaling should be fairly easy. Inhaling is a little bit harder because you have to suck the, the gas down. Just simply spoken to create a picture for the non rebreather divers of you. So um, if it's a back mounted unit, it's the other way around. Right? Um, so exhalation should be a little, a little bit easier than inhalation. In all honesty, you basically do not feel that. It's not like, on a, let's say, I'm diving a classic kiss with the, with the uh, counter lungs on the back. It's not like I'm struggling inhaling and phew, the gas is, is escaping my mouth uh, magically when I exhale. That's not the case. So you can, I mean, you inhale, exhale like you do while sitting somewhere on a table, but measuring it, there is an advantage. And if I switch, for example, from my KISS classic to an oxygen rebreather, the oxygen rebreather is breathing easier, as simple as that. Um, so that's generally an advantage. Um, and then you obviously have all those rebreathers that have the counter lungs basically on the same side. So on the big ones, you have these on the, on the back mounted units. Some of them have these over the shoulder mount counter lungs that usually breathe quite good. The go has the counter lungs like basically on the side of the lungs. So it doesn't matter if I'm like this or if I'm upside down, they're always in the same spot. So that makes excellent breathing resistance. Um, so generally speaking, chest mounted rebreathers have a little bit better breathing characteristics, at least in my experience than back mounted units, but you cannot generalize that. It's just something that you have to keep in mind. Um, and the other thing is, and that's clearly an advantage in my opinion, they are way easier to travel with. So if I think about the Go or the Triton or the Symbios, like the real small ones, the Optima is a little bit bigger. It's way easier to stuff that somewhere in a bag or even take it in your carry-on than like traveling with the KISS Classic or a recently Dove or Ouroboros again, which is huge. So, um, or back in the day, like the RB80, you always needed this extra box, suitcase, whatever, and another 30, 35 kilos or something. So especially in today's world, uh, traveling by plane, that's a real pain in the butt. Uh, while, for example, the GO is just awesome. I mean, you put it in your, in your carry-on luggage and you're ready to go. And same goes for sure for... Uh, rebreathers like the Symbios or, or the Triton. So that's a real advantage. Um, so generally speaking, um, for a beginner in rebreather diving, I think that's a very smart way to go because all of them you can basically combine with traditional scuba gear. I'm not really sure about the Triton and uh, the, uh, the Optima, etc. But I mean, from all I know, um, you still can use your back mount gear and you clip it kind of on. The Go is basically built around this concept, so that's super easy. And um, it's a great starter. Uh, it's a real great starting point. Uh, I'm sorry, coming back to the Go again. I mean, you can use it like an oxygen rebreather as a starting point and then upgrade and uh, like on a modular system, build it up. And if I remember correct, the... Um, the Triton was originally also started as an oxygen rebreather. So um, that's probably a really nice concept um, money-wise as well as uh, building experience. Um, probably one of the better rebreathers to get into rebreather diving. All right, I hope that answers all the questions that came along um, over the last couple of videos. Um, there will be an update on the deep water treasure soon. So I'm still fiddling around with equipment. The school is now ready. So I'm looking a little bit on how to set up the material that I want to carry with me for eventual recoveries. Um, I'm still waiting for material from a um, from a manufacturer that I wanted to support, but somehow is a bit unresponsive. So I started to build some stuff just to be on the safe side, like lights on the scooter and stuff like that. And I'm still working on the scooter, con on the rebreather concept. So I did a test dive recently, lost the camera, one of these. Um, another one, I think I lost three or four cameras in the last two months, really ridiculous. So um, that's a little bit of a, extra ones. I'll do another one and uh, see if I can get some footage from there. I'm also waiting for a camera housing for the action cams because all the stuff that I have is not going that deep. 
So yeah, quite some stuff that's going on, but that I will update you in an extra video one of these days. So stay tuned. Thanks for all of you who supported it. Um, if you haven't seen it, look in the description of this video. I'll put a link in there. And uh, yeah, have a nice Sunday. See you soon.